Hey there students, uh, welcome to part uh, 6 of the Algebra 2 CST review. In this series we're going to be going over questions 71 to 76. Remember you can always get a copy of this document that I'm going over right here on microservice.com slash test prep. Alright, so let's take a look at um, question number 71. So question 71, we have a, an equation. It says if x is a real number, for what values of x is the equation 3x minus 9 over 3 equals x minus 3 true. Alright, so let's see if we can solve this equation. We have uh, 3x minus 9 over 3 equals x minus 3. Now this is the case where you have an equation with variables on both sides. Now anytime you're solving an equation with a variable on both sides, you could have no solution, one solution, or infinitely possible solutions, okay? Anytime you end up with, uh, let me give you some examples. If you have, let's say, 3 equals 4, if you have a false statement like this, this basically means there's no solution, all right? No solution. If you have a statement that's true like x equals x or um, 5 equals 5, if it's a true statement like this, in this case, you're going to have all values all values or you can say infinitely many okay um, when you end up with a variable on one side and a constant on the other side you have a unique solution all right so one of these should apply to this scenario that we have over here so let's go ahead and, and solve it so um, another thing you have to note is anytime we have a variable on the denominator we have restrictions on our x there are no variables on the denominators here so we don't have any restrictions okay the restrictions basically requires that the denominator cannot be zero. Now, I'll multiply both sides by three to get rid of this denominator right here. Multiply by three. So I'm going to have this three divide out. We have 3x minus 9 equals, so be careful here, I'm going to distribute this three to these two terms. All right, equals 3x minus 9. You notice we have an identical equation on both sides. So what does this mean? If you have an identity or true statement like this, you're going to have um, all values of x. All right, all values of x, or you can say infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. All right, that only happens when you have identical quantities on both sides. All right, and then since we didn't have any variables in the denominator, we have no restrictions on the x. So our answer is going to be option letter A. All right, let's take a look at uh, question 2, uh, 72. All right, so let's take a look at number 72. Um, 72 say, say that uh, on a recent test, Jeremy wrote the equation x squared minus 16 over x minus 4 equals x plus 4, which of the following statements is correct about the equation he wrote? Alright, so um, let's see, we have x squared minus 16 over x minus 4 equals x plus 4. Now, if you look at the original equation, are there any restrictions on x? Basically, is there anything that can cause the denominator to be 0? Absolutely. If this value of x were 4, 4 minus 4 is going to be 0, so x cannot be 4. If x is 4, we're going to have an undefined expression here. All right, so let's go ahead and um, we can factor the numerator. This is a difference of squares. So we can root the first and the last and add or subtract the, uh, the two terms. So we're going to have x minus 4 times x plus 4 as a factored form of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4 equals x plus 4. And then you notice that uh, these x minus 4s can divide out. And then you have x plus 4 equals x plus 4. Now we have an, a situation again where we have identical expressions um, on both sides. So what does that tell you? We have infinitely many solutions except x cannot be 4, okay? So um, how do we write this? Let's look at the options we have. Uh, the equation is always true. The equation is always true, except what? 
except uh, when x is 4. Why is that a restriction? Because when x is 4, we're going to have 0 in the denominator here, which is going to ca cause an undefined expression. Okay, so this equation is always true because both sides are the same, except when x equals 4, we're going to be having a, a uh, undefined term in the uh, expression right here. All right, so our answer is going to be option A. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question number 73. Uh, 73 says that um, given equation y equals x to the n, where x is greater than 0 and n is less than 0, which statements is valid for real values of y? So we have y equals x to the n, and we're told, we're given uh, restrictions on x, x is greater than 0, and n is less than 0. So what do we, what is this? What do these restrictions in x and y, x and n, tell us about y? Well, a good strategy to do this is to pick candidates, all right? So since x is greater than 0, it has to be positive. So let's pick a positive number. How about we say let x be 1. Uh, let's say x is 1, for example, okay? And then n is less than 0. So how about we say n be negative 1, all right? So let's see what our y is going to be using these two candidates that fit our restrictions. So we're going to have y is going to be x, which is 1, to the negative 1. All right, so what does a negative reciprocal do to a number? All it does is it reciprocates the number, right? So we're going to have 1 over 1 to the 1, which is just 1. All right, so as long as x is positive, the only, all that this negative exponent will do is just, just going to reciprocate uh, the number, all right? So what do we know about 1? Is 1 greater than 0? Absolutely, 1 is greater than 0. Is 1 equal 0? No. Is 1 less than 0? No. Is 1 less than or equal to 0? No. So all these other three options do not work. We can rest assured that our correct answer is option A. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question 74. Uh, question 74 uh, says, uh, x is a real number, which best describes the value for x for which the inequality is true? So, um, we have the square root of x is greater than 0. So, uh, which of this is true? Alright, so what I'm going to do is, uh, we have certain restrictions here, either greater than 0, greater than or equal to zero, all values of x, or no values of x. So let's make a partition uh, to see what our answer is over here. All right, so um, this is going to be the zero point in the center. I'm going to pick uh, different values of x. x is a real number, so it could be negative, positive, or zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this area, x less than zero. We're going to test x equals 0, and then we're going to test x greater than 0 to see which uh, intervals work. All right, so for x less than 0, x is negative, we're going to try x equals negative 1. So what is the square root of negative 1? Is that less greater than 0? Square root of negative 1 is i. Is i greater than 0? No, i is not greater than 0. All right, so... Interval 1 is no good. So the first interval, the interval to the left here, doesn't work. Can x be equal to 0, though? Let's test x equals 0. If x equals 0, what is, is this, what is the square root of 0? Is the square root of 0 greater than 0 or positive? The answer is no. The square root of 0 is equal to 0. Okay? Let me, let me write this differently so we can that again, we can set it up like this. The square root of zero um, is equal to what? The square root of zero is equal to zero. And is zero bigger than itself? Absolutely not, that doesn't make any sense. So x cannot be zero. So this boundary point is, is bad also. This is bad, this is bad. Now how about the values bigger than zero? What can we test? We can test, how about we test x equals uh, for x greater than 0, how about we test x equals 1? 
What is the square root of 1? Square root of 1 is 1. Is 1 greater than 0? Absolutely. So this one is actually good. So this interval is good. So what can we conclude? We can conclude this statement is true as long as x is for all x greater than 0. Okay, for all x greater than 0, that gives us option letter A. All right, let's take a look at uh, 75. All right, so for 75, it says, uh, which of the following statements is true about the statement below? All right, so we have the equation x squared equals the square root of x. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. Uh, to start out, I can get rid of this square root by squaring both sides because I know that square is the opposite of square root, so I square this side, and then I square this side, and then I'm going to have x to the fourth equals, if you square the square root of x, it's going to be x. So now you subtract x from both sides, subtract x, subtract x. So you're going to have um, x to the fourth minus x equals 0. And then factor this. I can uh, factor out an x from these two terms right here. So if I factor out an x, I'll be left with x to the third minus 1 equals 0. Now we're going to set both factors to 0. Okay, set x equals to zero, 0 or x to the third minus 1 equals 0. These are the two equations that we solve. We'll see the values of x to satisfy this original condition. All right. So this is already solved. Let's solve this. You add 1 to both sides. Uh, x equals 1. Um, x to the third equals 1. And then you go ahead and take the cube root of both sides. And then you have uh, x equals the cube root of 1 is just 1. So those are two candidates that actually satisfy uh, the original equation. Okay? All right, so let's, let's look at our options here. A, the statement is always true. Absolutely not. Only these two values work. The statement is true when x is negative. We don't have any negative answers here, so that doesn't work. The statement is true for when x equals 0. Absolutely, because we have that as one of our answers right here. Okay, and then the statement is never true. That's false because it's true at, at two times, in at two points of x, 0 and 1. So our correct answer is option C because the statement is true when x is 0. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at question number 76. Question 76 says that uh, if x is a real number, for what values of x is the equation log base 5 of 5 to the x true? So we're solving a, a logarithmic equation here log base 5 of 5 to the x. When is this true? Well, you remember the inverse property of logarithms that we talked about earlier. Let's say you have log base a of a to the x. These two cancel out and your final answer is x. Okay, as long as the base and the arguments of the logarithm match, they cancel each other out, and you're just left with the power. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Notice the base and the arguments are identical, so these two will cancel out, and then you end up with x equals x. When is x equal x? It's always, x is always equal to x, okay? So this works for all values of x. Whatever you put for x on the left, that's exactly what it's going to be on the right. So our, our final answer for number 76 is option a. All right, so there you have it.